so here's my problem. <laughs> this is what's wrong with me. Hi, it's me. I have tits and I don't want them. Now, we all know what the permanent solution for this is, but I am not in a position in my life right now where a surgery is like logistically advisable. So, um, we have to, we have, we have to make do with binding. My favorite method of binding is taping. The gender, the gender euphoria, the euphoria is just you know, but I can't do that all the time. I, I, it's, it's a, it's a luxury. I know there are some people that tape every day and I think that's insane. Um, my skin won't tolerate that. I do have a binder. I, I made this. It works pretty well. I, I like, I like what it does for me. Um, but it's still, it's a compression binder, which means that I, I can't wear it for like super long periods of time. I can't wear it to like a dance class or to work because I have to bike to work. Or like sometimes I, I have found that just kind of wearing it like out and about, I'll, I'll feel a little uh, fatigued and I don't, I, like I don't, either my health is, is steadily declining or I'm just like not tolerant of compression binders anymore. I don't know. Either way, I, I can't wear this to work. I can't wear like a regular binder to work because I have to, I have to go through a, a physically strenuous, process to get to and from work. I used to tolerate that. I used to tolerate just like wearing a, a bra. Um, but I reached a point in my life where I was no longer willing, willing to tolerate that. And, uh, I like, I, these, I, I need these gone. I need them gone. I do not want them visible. I don't want anybody to know that I have them. I <laughs> so I found myself wondering if I could make a binder using boning in the front um, so that it relies less on compression and more on having like a solid structure in the front to to create the image of a flat chest uh, and i did it now full disclosure before i get into this i i'm kind of sure not like a hundred percent but i'm pretty sure that the only reason I've been able to get away with making this in the way that I have is because I have a very small chest to begin with. I don't know if this will or will not work for somebody with a larger chest or somebody with just like in general who uh, is, is larger than me because I have only had my own body to work with. But I, what I hope is that this information could potentially be useful for somebody, you know, if someone sees it and they have, you know, a bigger chest and a bigger brain than I do, um, then maybe they can, you know, take this information and run with it and use it as like a, like a jumping off point for their own project. So the way that my chest works is that I need to, I need it. So here they are, my beloved. So the way that my chest works is that all I really need is like some good pressure, like right here. Like it's, it's easy to flatten them. They just need to like go up and to the side. So when I was initially designing this thing, um, my intention was to have it sort of like keep my chest like up and to the side. Cause that's what I do with like any kind of binding, especially with taping. I, I you know, push it like up and then put it over here and then it's like it's okay you know as i was making it uh i realized that that wasn't really going to work in the way that i was hoping that it would without it like still being really tight around my ribs and thus defeating the entire purpose of the thing uh, but it does still work in creating like a flat silhouette in the front and here is how so <laughs> So this is what the profile silhouette looks like with no binding. An important thing to notice here is what we will be uh, very professionally calling the underboob crease, uh, which still manages to be noticeable when wearing like moderately tight knit fabrics, like what most of my long sleeve shirts are made of. Um, and this is what the silhouette looks like with the binder on. Um, it is tight enough to do some flattening in the middle here just by like pushing my chest in, but the majority of the figure comes just from the shape of the boning. The mass of my chest is sitting in roughly the same place as it is when I wear like a sports bra, um, but uh, notice that the underboob crease is nowhere to be seen. And that is because the boning extends farther down than that and it actually builds out a smoother chest shape down here. So what this thing is, is kind of like a combination between like a bra and a binder and a pair of stays and a bust bodice. Like what I, I, I was, um, heavily inspired really by uh the way that my i have a, a 
like a bodice that I bought at the Renaissance Fair and the way that it would like flatten my chest for the sake of creating cleavage up top but it would it would flatten my chest and it would be like it's just, just flat flat across the front and I was wondering if I could do that but without you know the, the cleavage so that was my my motivation Introducing VoiceOver Dorian, whose voice is significantly deeper than Video Dorian's is because I filmed all of that talking three and a half months ago and am only now getting around to editing it. So like I said, this thing was inspired by historical undergarments like Regency short stays or older, more traditional stays, or a bodice you might find at a Ren fair, which is not a historical garment, but it's close enough, and also by Mariah Patty's modernizing take on them for use as athletic wear. I wasn't sure if my intended effect would be better achieved by putting the boning in vertically and parallel or in a radial pattern since I didn't have any prior experience with boned garments, but ultimately I settled on the radial pattern. I started construction with one piece of white cotton thrift store bed sheet and one piece of this nude colored mesh that my mom had a whole bunch of for some reason and then she gave it all to me. I also bought some synthetic whalebone from Birdley and Trowbridge. I don't have any tools that are good for cutting a material that's this sturdy, uh, but I found that if I scraped some notches into either side along my marks with my designated shitty beat up scissors, I could then just snap the piece cleanly in half. Each piece got numbered by placement and then the edges were sanded down into curves. I also flattened them with an iron to neutralize the shape that they took from being coiled so tightly. You can also see me blowing on them to cool them down because when you're reshaping a plastic material, it's less about the shape it heats up as and more about the shape that it cools down as. And if you've ever heat styled a cosplay wig, you know this intimately well. Testing the boning out with the pieces, I immediately realized I'd need another piece of cotton for structure uh, because the mesh was far too stretchy to keep the bones in place. So I took that apart and I don't even remember what I was tracing in this clip, but it looks really good. So I'm keeping it in. I think I'm copying the lines for the boning channels to the other half of the fabric so that they're symmetrical. Also, you know, pro tip, if you didn't know if you need to trace something but you don't have a light box, you can just use a window. Anyway, I cut another layer and I put them together carefully to make sure the channels I drew were still visible and that the mesh would sit on top just for the color. I stitched the bottom, flipped it right side out, started sewing the channels. I had to be kind of careful about this because the mesh is very, like, fiddly and stretchy and you have to really pay attention to it when you're running it through a machine. And then I tied all the loose threads by hand. I don't remember why. <laughs> I think I probably wanted to avoid backstitching the channels because I didn't want the bulky thread or I wanted it to come undone easy in case I fucked it up or something. Next, I finished the top edge with more of the mesh, also by hand, and this I do remember why, it's because I was afraid of catching the boning with the needle if I used the machine on it. And next I attached the back, which was the back half of a bra that I found at a thrift store specifically for this purpose. And then I could try it on properly and start working on the straps. I used cotton and mesh for the front and the remains of the bra straps for the back. These were not the final straps, by the way, it took a lot of trial and error for me to get a good shape for some reason. And then it was about done. I had some kind of plan for finishing this bit nicely, but I ended up just folding it over. And this is the final result. It is not perfect, but it's certainly good enough, and it's been a really important undergarment for me to have the past year, because it lets me bind regardless of what kind of activity I have to do. So like, is this thing the perfect solution? No. It's gonna have drawbacks just like every other form of binding. You know, with compression binding, it makes me feel winded. With taping, I get blisters. Um, with this, I kind of like, I can't, I can't wear it with like this, the, the, where the boning ends by the strap, it kind of like protrudes out of some shirts. So like, there's some stuff that I kind of can't wear with it without it looking weird. And it's still, you know, it'll not always sit exactly where I want it to. A few months ago, I bought uh, like a, like a, slim fitting turtleneck at the thrift store because I'm a homosexual and I can't really wear it without anything layered on top of it until I have my tits cut off because you can like see the boning through the shirt it looks like it kind of looks weird and so it like it's you know there's going to be pros and cons with every method of binding and obviously the perfect solution is just to cut your chest off altogether um but for now this is kind of the the one that has the least uh annoying cons uh for for the pros that i'm getting for me personally i mean and i i don't even know if this would work on somebody that isn't shaped like me you know i like i just it's working for me and 
I thought I would share. So, I don't know, do with this information what you will. Yeah, so like, have, have fun with that. Bye. <laughs> I have very- uh, ooh, um, words. Listen, I know there's not much there to begin with, but like, it does make a difference, I swear to God. Please excuse how gross this looks. I, uh, actually made this several months ago, and it immediately became the only chest support garment I wear. And I only made one of them, so it- it- <coughs> You are just a little delinquent. Oh, I should- I should read from my script that I have in front of me instead of trying to pull words out of my brain. You know, perhaps I should have known something was up by the way that I, like, always liked this kind of silhouette much better than any, like, modern silhouette. Maybe I'll just end it there. I don't know. Maybe this video can just be a train wreck. <laughs>